Hello, my name is uh, Keith Rigg, reader at Crossway Church Keswick. We are living in strange times when much of what we have taken for granted has been removed from us and we long to return to normal. On one of my permitted walks I was thinking that even the parable of the Good Samaritan seems to have been turned on its head. We are now regarded as the good neighbour if we pass by on the other side of the road to ensure that we are social distancing and we will often get a look if we don't. Today I'd like to offer a few thoughts from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9 which speaks into these times in which we live. The subtitle for this passage is Praise to God for a Living Hope and as believers a living hope is one thing we do have in these times. Hope for the present and hope for the future. At a time where politicians seem to make promises that can't be met and can't make the promises we want to hear, it's good to go back to the Bible to look at God's promises which are being met. The first promise in this passage is of a new birth and an inheritance. Verses 3 to 4 say, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Firstly, we are encouraged to praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And whilst we may normally associate praising God with being in church, it's good to remember that we can praise God wherever we are, whether that's in our homes or on our daily exercise. And there is much we can praise God for, for who he is and what he has done. As we are reminded in Psalm 91, he is the Most High, the Almighty One, the Lord and our God in whom we can trust. These facts don't change because of the coronavirus or any other difficulty we face. He is also the Creator God. And maybe this year we have had more time to watch nature getting on with what it does best. We can also praise God for his son Jesus. It was always God's plan from the beginning that God would send his son Jesus to die for our sins, to redeem us. Through that act, we can come into a restored relationship with our Father in heaven. If we turn away from our wrongdoings, say sorry and put our trust in him. Because of God's great mercy and because Christ is risen, then death is defeated and we have been given a new birth, a living hope and an inheritance. The inheritance of eternal life that can never perish, spoil or fade like an earthly inheritance would. The fact that Christ is risen, and our response to that, is the basis for the living hope that we can have each day of our lives. Have you put your trust in the risen Lord Jesus? And if not, is now the time? Turn away from your wrongdoings. Say sorry to God and ask Jesus to come into your life and tell someone in the church you have done this. The second promise is of God's power and presence in difficult times. In verses 4 to 7 we read, This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Apparently, one of the newer activities for the over 50s is skiing, but not the variety that needs snow and a slope, but rather spending your kid's inheritance, SKI. In other words, pleasing yourself and having fun. The reality, though, is that any earthly inheritance, small or large, requires the giver of the inheritance to die before the recipient gets the benefit from it. The heavenly inheritance that God has given us required his son Jesus to die and to rise again and for us to physically die before we can fully benefit. In the meantime, it is kept in heaven where nothing can take it away from us and that is the source of our living hope. Some of you have received a letter from the NHS strongly advising you to stay at home, to shield you from coronavirus. Verse 5 says we are shielded by God's power through our faith in Jesus for the rest of our time on earth. And this doesn't mean that difficult times won't come, as this passage goes on to explain, 
but rather that our salvation is assured and we are promised the inheritance of eternal life. The last verse of the hymn in Christ alone sums this up. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Whilst we can greatly rejoice in our salvation and the promise of our inheritance, the reality for many of us is summarised in that verse, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. The impact of coronavirus may be one trial that is common to us all at present, but you may be experiencing others. Does this mean that God's power is no longer shielding us? Not at all, but God promises to be with us in these trials, and as we look to him and trust him, he will enable our faith to grow. The third and final promises of salvation and eternal life. Which one of Jesus' disciples do you most closely identify with? It may be Thomas, who didn't believe Jesus had risen from the dead until he could see and touch Jesus for himself. Jesus told him that blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that is the case for all of us who follow Christ now. And we can echo the words of verse 8, that though we have not seen Jesus, we love him. And even though we do not see Jesus now, we believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. In these strange times, let us take time to draw nearer to God, to trust him more, to allow our faith to grow and to rejoice in that living hope he has given us through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. May God bless you as you continue to reflect on these words and thank you for listening.